Okay, so the very first time that I ever registered my own LLC, I was all kinds of lost in the sauce, y'all. Um, I did all kinds of stuff unnecessarily. First, I unnecessarily um, put my husband on my articles, well, my ex-husband at the time, so not my current husband, my ex-husband at the time. I unnecessarily put him on my articles of organization, creating a multi-member LLC. I didn't have an operating agreement, which I needed since I had actually created that multi-member LLC unknowingly. I put my home address on my articles. I used myself as my agent at my home address on those articles. And I just did not understand the steps of forming an LLC at all. And because of all of that, um, if you've heard my story before, you kind of already know what happened but if you didn't and you're new here because I made all of those mistakes I ended up ultimately losing that business having to dissolve that business which I had been growing for almost five years um, had been building a significant nest egg with it was my side hustle but it was a side hustle that I took very seriously it was my part-time job um, so I did work a full-time 40-hour work week but I did that business about 20 hours a week on the side and um, ended up losing it in my divorce because I had no idea what I was doing when I registered my LLC, when I was setting up my initial business structure, I screwed it all the way up. I was using personal money to set it up. I mean, it was all kinds of things. And I didn't even realize that until I was actually going through a divorce, um, a pretty ugly or nasty divorce, I, I would say, a devastating divorce, but I did not even realize all the ways that I had messed up. So I didn't understand the steps um, at all. And honestly, there are about five steps to registering your LLC that I think are critical to understand and to know in order to be able to do this thing. And if I were you, um, I'd follow them step by step. And I'd also use the hack that I am going to share with you a little bit later on in this video in order to ultimately get your LLC registered, get it registered properly, get it registered the right way, and to get it registered to a point where you will actually be able to achieve your dream of entrepreneurial freedom. So, if I were you, I would do it this way. C -P -C -C -P. Step number one, name your LLC. Yes, I know, it probably seems self-explanatory, but it is not. Um, LLCs are legal entities, all right? And so there are definitely rules that will apply when you are naming your LLCs, and the rules vary from state to state. It is really important for you to understand your state's requirements when it comes to naming your LLC. I know a lot of people feel like when they're naming their business, it is this very personal thing and they want to be all creative and go out there and do all of these things. But there are real true rules surrounding what name you choose, including what you have to put at the end of your name, depending upon your state. If you're registering an LLC, if it has to say LLC, if it has to say LTD, if it has to say limited liability company, you will find state laws on um, it's West, this website that I'm going to give you, which is a part of the hack, you will find state laws for every single state um, that I will get to you very shortly. But ultimately, there's some other tips about choosing business names that I think are absolutely critical. You don't want to put things inside of your name that banks are going to frown upon or that's going to prevent you from being able to get loans or even prevent you from being able to get good business credit. There are some things in names that creditors frown upon, that banks frown upon, that in investors will frown upon. So all of that is really important in step number one when choosing your business name. Now, I am going to dive a lot more deeply into the specifics around choosing a business name in next week's video. So make sure that if you want to find all that stuff out that you are subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so that we can make sure that you get the information. Um, but I also want you to know that I've done other videos on checking them out. And there are some real good tips in there on how to choose a business name because it is 100% 
100% important when you are doing it. Don't just pick it half ass and out the wazoo, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and link to my previous videos, but go ahead and make sure that you check out next week's video as well, because step one is step one in being able to set up your register, your LLC the right way. Before we get into step two, I have to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Taylor Brands. That's right, because so much of the information that I'm going over with you right now in these steps, I was able to get from their amazing blog on their website that is specifically designed to help entrepreneurs get their organization started, get their LLC set up, chock full of information as well as get their brand set up. So I just had to interrupt really quick before we keep going and give them a shout out and say, definitely check out Taylor Brands. Link is in the description in the comments below. Let's get back into it. Step number two, select the state that you want to register in. Now, this might also seem like a no brainer, but the reality is you can choose to register and to form your LLC in any state in the U.S. regardless of where you live. Now, it does make sense to choose where you live because, you know, that's where you'll be living and that's where you're doing business. But a lot of LLC business owners choose to register their, their businesses in other states for a number of different reasons due to out of state rules or taxes or lower setup costs or lower running costs, self-employment tax, sales tax. All of those things can be beneficial in a state that is not your own. So it's really important for you to understand that you have a choice, that you can choose which state you register in, and that you should ultimately make sure that you are investigating what the state options are when you are making the selection of where you'd like to register that LLC. Now, if you do decide to choose a different state than the one you lived in, or even the one that you do live in, make sure that you are aware of what those states requirements are for establishing and maintaining your LLC because different states have different rules around the establishment and the maintenance of that LLC, like different reports that are due or how taxes have to be filed or just different things like that. So you want to make sure that you're completely aware. Once you learn all of that, you might find that there are several states that could be a better choice for you when it comes to forming your LLC out of state. Like for instance, Delaware is a famous, infamous state for actually forming LLCs. And there's a lot of folks who form their business in Delaware because registering your name there, it's very known, it's very much so known to be a state that is favorable for small businesses and for registration. Um, it doesn't mean registering your business in one state over another is going to be, you know, better. It doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do business where you currently are located. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that when you register your business in one state, that that doesn't prevent that business name from being available in a different state, which also means that you might want to look into trademarking. Now, I oftentimes get the question from folks, um, CP, can you please do a video that is more in depth around, you know, a trademark versus a copyright versus, you know, registering your state, registering your business in your state. And if you want me to dive a little bit deeper, knowing that I am not an attorney, I am not a business attorney, I am not giving you legal advice. I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. I am providing you with insight onto what I have into what I have learned over the years, starting and scaling multiple businesses, and then ultimately helping startup entrepreneurs and grow entrepreneurs set up their business structures. It has required me to know a whole lot more than the average bear, but I am not an attorney. So I would definitely recommend that you consult one if you've got questions, but let me know in the comments below if you would like a more detailed video, just comment more detail CP and I will put together a video for you. Just kind of explaining the differences between registering your state, um, copyright and trademark. Because again, if you register your business in, let's just say your home state, that doesn't mean that someone can't use your exact same business name or register a similar business in another state, especially if you don't have a kind of a national trademark. So you're definitely going to want to make sure that you understand each state's requirements, but also really take a look and see nationally what's going on with that business name before you register it. Because step two, choosing the state and also understanding what's going on nationally is going to be critical in your wonderful journey of registering that LLC. 
Step number three is to file your articles of organization. Now, this is really important to understand. Um, you are going to file articles of organization with your state. Now, different states call it different things. It can be um, certificate of formation. It can be certificate of organization. It can be articles of organization. It could be articles of incorporation, just depending upon what state it is. But ultimately, that is the step, right? Typically, most states now will allow you to actually do electronic registering, meaning it's all online. I think every single state. The last time I checked, really, um, there were a couple of states that hadn't done it, but that was before the pandemic. I am pretty sure that those states have probably gotten on board with things because during the pandemic, nobody could really see anybody and people were still registering businesses at a record pace. So the LLC registration or articles of incorporation filing with whatever state you choose will most likely be an electronic filing. And you can check out what the rules are in the hack that I'm about to give you, but also by checking out that state's Secretary of State's website. They will give you a lot of information. Now, filing fees are a basic part of actually filing your articles of an organization. And filing fees vary from state to state. They can be anywhere from 50 bucks up to, uh, from what I remember, I think the highest in the last couple of years that I've seen is $800. Now, at least at the time of the filming of this video. Obviously, y'all, inflation is doing something in the world today so that 50 to 800 might be a hundred to a thousand at this point but the point is know what you are up against when it comes to actually having the fee to file your articles of incorporation now once you do the filing and you are approved you are actually going to receive a state certificate of organization proving that you are an LLC and that you exist as a legal entity this document is one of the most prideful moments in a startup entrepreneur's life. I remember the first time I received my very first certificate, I framed it. It was amazing. I loved it. Um, and I still actually have my original one, even though that business I lost because I know these steps and I ain't do them well. Um, but the bottom line is that certificate really truly is a great feather in your cap. And it gives you that confidence and that hope that you are well on your way to entrepreneurship. So it's a very exciting piece of this step, but it is a big one when it comes to actually registering that LLC. Now, step number four in registering your LLC is to choose a registered agent. Now, regardless of your LLC's location, whichever state you've ultimately chosen, you need a registered agent and a registered office because of due process. Now, a registered agent is in essence an individual who is on your business paperwork that you are saying will receive due process or legal documentation on behalf of your business. In most states, they have to have a physical address, meaning they have to be able to be served. Um, that way they can be served with subpoenas or regulatory tax notices or any kind of correspondence that your business may receive on a legal basis. And that is who the registered agent is. Now I have a whole nother video that I go in depth into a registered agent, who you can choose, who I recommend that you choose. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, but if you want to check out that video, you can go ahead. I'm going to link to it right here in the cards because it's really important for you to understand who your registered agent can be, who they should be, and what that ultimately means when you're registering. But again, in this step, it is absolutely important for you to choose a registered agent because every single state that you are registering and will require it in order for you to successfully register your LLC. And step number five in successfully registering your LLC is creating an operating agreement. Y'all, I did not do that in my very first business, you know, kind of when I started to tell you that story and I didn't even really recognize that it was a thing. Um, and it is critically important. I think it's important even if you are a single member LLC because you want to make sure that if something happens to you, everyone else around you who might be handling your estate or whatever the case may be, if you pass away, knows what should happen with your business. But aside from that, especially if you are a multi-member LLC, a partnership, that kind of a thing, an operating agreement is going to be absolutely critical. And the operating agreement, agreement records your LLC setup. It records your organization 
organizational structure. It records who's responsible for daily duties, who's got decision-making power, what happens if the business is dissolved, who's got how much power to be able to make decisions for the organization, and if one of the members of the LLC is a managing member, meaning actually running the day-to-day operations of the organization. So the operating agreement is so, so important. And I think that you really need to investigate looking into one, having one in place, especially if you have decided to put multiple people on the LLC, creating a multi-member LLC. Now, most states don't require an LLC actually have an operating agreement. Some do, but most don't. But if you are looking for investors um, that are ultimately going to be giving money to your organization, you want to make sure you have an operating agreement because you want to make sure that if it ever comes down to it and there's any kind of internal disagreement between partners, because it does happen, I've experienced it. So it's a whole nother video, y'all, whole nother video. Um, But if there is some type of disagreement, you want to make sure that your operating agreement is in place, that everyone has signed it, and that it ultimately addresses what happens, like uh, members' responsibilities, profit, loss allocation, proceedings when a member wants to leave and sell their shares and more, especially if you have a partner or a member that's a part of your LLC and they've got families. It's a very important thing to talk about because if something happens to that partner, then you're going to want to make sure that you know what happens with their shares because that's how people end up in business with people they don't even know that they don't like and they don't trust because something didn't happen to the original partner. Ain't no real operating agreement talking about what's supposed to happen and all of a sudden their kids and their spouse and their family is involved in the business. So an operating agreement is critically important for a number of different reasons. The ones I just named are just a few, my love, just a few. Now that we've discussed the most important steps in registering your new LLC, let's talk about this hack that I promised to share with you. And before I do, if you are finding value in what I have talked to you about so far, please make sure that you smash that like button. Just let me know by giving me a like and while you're down there subscribing because ultimately I can continue to bring you value if I know that you are getting value and that like button is the best way to do it. Or leave me a comment and say, hey CP, love it. And I'll make sure to keep making you all these great videos. So let's talk about this hack. And the hack is you can get all this stuff, all the steps that I just mentioned to you done for you. This is not something that you have to navigate all on your own. Registering your LLC is a huge milestone in your entrepreneurial journey, but it ain't easy to understand. It can get extremely tricky. And again, if you remember my story, it's not something that you really want to mess up on. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? And sometimes just delegating it and having someone easily do it for you is the best answer for everyone involved. I've done it both ways. I've done it myself. Obviously in the beginning I did it wrong and I've also had others do it for me. And the hack that I'm going to tell you about is that somebody else can do it for you and they are actually the sponsors of today's video and that is Taylor brands. That's right, y'all. Taylor Brands provides all the tools you need to turn your idea into a real business. First, you can use Taylor Brands LLC formation service to officially form and legalize your business starting for free. With Taylor Brands, you can form an LLC in minutes with their expert guided service starting at zero dollars. First, all you have to do is choose a state and a name, answer a few questions, and they will actually submit your application for you. They can also be your registered agent, help get your EIN, handle any trademarking questions, keep track of your annual compliance requirements. Make sure that you've answered all the questions that you need answered in order to properly file, easily file, and cheaply file your LLC in minutes. And they also even have a service, y'all, that will help you get your branding started, including your logo and business cards and your website too. Taylor Brands is absolutely amazing. And even though they are sponsoring this video, y'all know that I would not be talking about a tool or a service if I did not wholeheartedly believe in it. And if I didn't think it could impact your business and give you the freedom and flexibility that you so deserve and desire. Taylor Brands is 
absolutely amazing. They are a true one-stop shop. They have tons of information and blogs to help educate you as well. And a lot of information that I was looking for, even for today's video, I was able to find on their website. They will walk you through the steps to getting your business started, because those steps can be extremely overwhelming and confusing enough. So anything that I can give you that will actually help you delegate it, I wanna make sure I provide it. And so I searched far and wide, long time, looking for the perfect type of service that could really meet your needs and tailor brands is what I ultimately ended up with. Even though they are a sponsor, they are only a sponsor because they are good, because I believe in their service and they can actually take this entire daunting task off of your plate. Yes, they can. So if you aren't in the business of wanting to figure out how to actually register your LLC all by yourself and figuring it out by yourself, absolutely 100% take a look at Taylor Brands. The link to access them, their website, and their services is right below this video. Again, that link will get you right now at the time of this video, the ability to register for free. So make sure you check it out. The link is right there. It's also going to be in the description and in the comments. And you can use them um, to actually get your business registered and to check out some of the things that I talked about in this video with regards to what the laws are, what the fees are in different states. If you wanna register in your own state or a different state all the information is right at taylor brands by accessing the link below so make sure that you check it out because they are doing an absolute solid for startups an amazing service that i absolutely 100 percent wish i had when i was starting my very first business 25 years ago had i used them i probably wouldn't have lost that business y'all it would probably still be in place and it wouldn't have been taken by my divorce <laughs> my divorce. How about that? I know. I just love that movie, right? Just love it. All right. And don't forget to check out the sponsor of today's video, Taylor Brands. Link in the description and in the comments. Amazing. Helping entrepreneurs get their LLCs set up, started, as well as their brand. Make sure you check out that link in the description box below. So what are the lessons for this she boss and for you number one lesson is know and understand the steps to registering your llc to registering your business you have to understand what kind of goes into it and ultimately make sure that you are completely aware of what your options are from the information that i provided for you in this video and the second lesson is get help Okay, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. And this is absolutely something that you can delegate. I would actually recommend that you do. And if you do, you can use Taylor Brands to get it done for you. It's a huge lesson that again, I wish that I would have had all those years ago when I was registering my first LLC. So if you want to find out more about whether or not an LLC, LLC is even the right fit for you, then you are gonna wanna watch this video right here because it is an interview with my attorney and with my accountant that are talking about the different types of business structures that exist and giving you the pros and the cons of an LLC versus an S Corp versus a C Corp versus all that good stuff. So hopefully you found today's video awesome. Until next time, my loves, I can't wait to see you. Stay safe. Bye-bye.